whole thing started in World War One. What is Cinemascope? The anamorphoscopic lens for the Cinemascope system. We see more horizontally than vertically. Cinemascope is destined to bring a new era in the motion picture. Nice flares, great image quality. We refuse to settle for something secondary. Hey guys, Chita here with questions for you. Do you want to achieve high production value and shoot unique visuals, but you don't really know where to start or you have so many options that you can't pick one? When diving into anamorphics, it can be overwhelming to choose your first or second or even your third lens. Just try to find the one that helps you craft the look that you're after. So let me break it to you. Finding the perfect lens does not have to be a long, complicated and overwhelming process. And you can get started in the next five minutes. In the last video, I made it clear that the trial and error method isn't a realistic way to achieve a production ready anamorphic rig and boost the production value of your footage. I introduced you to the idea of streamlining your anamorphic rig building and why it can make a big difference for your projects. The core thought for building a good rig is letting go of the excuses that stand in your way. In case you haven't watched the first video yet, you should do that right away because we covered a bunch of important ideas and you don't wanna miss those out. Now let's talk about how you can get started fast with anamorphic shooting while keeping your budget under control. Things are not as complicated as they sound. The first thing to figure out is your shooting style. And most people seem to ignore that when testing out anamorphics. Many beginners think that it's best to start with the cheapest option. I did the same. In anamorphic adapters, the cheapest options are usually super bulky lenses. These things weigh three, four, five pounds. They're so inconvenient. I haven't touched one in five years for this channel. But for the sake of this example, my first lens was a Hypergoner Hi-Fi 2. The size and weight are just a couple of the issues with buying the cheapest adapters available. You also get terrible minimum focus and it's a nightmare to rig them up. Sure, some of them have amazing image quality, but if the rest of its traits is stacked against you, how will you ever enjoy the image quality? You're likely to spend as much money jerry-rigging an extra large scope as you would on a solid rig for a good scope. Plus, the large scope is gonna take more time. Let's keep this scenario going. So you manage to put your rig together with pipe clamps and duct tape or chunks of wood. Now you put your camera behind it and you can't focus on anything inside your house. No worries, these are for epic vistas anyway. So you bravely head out to the door to fare the outside world and capture some glorious cinemascope footage. After 30 minutes of fiddling with double focus, lugging a super heavy and janky rig around and pushing your eyes to imagine the de-squeezed image because you didn't want to add a monitor on top of everything, you say, fine, whatever. Exhausted, you head back home with a few clips on the card. You load them up on Resolve or Premiere or Final Cut Pro, your pick. And then you realize that the lens was a little bit out of alignment and all the footage is ruined. Did you enjoy my short acting career? Hit that like button, yeah? If I had put this much effort and this much time and got these results, I would want to cut my losses as soon as possible and quit this anamorphic shooting thing. Doing so will only benefit your competition. The goal here is not to make the cheapest lens work. Lomo NAP crazy crowd, I'm looking at you. The goal is to start off with a lens that works for the way you shoot. That usually isn't the cheapest anamorphic on eBay, but it's not the priciest either. You also should avoid setting your sights on some rare and near impossible to get lens because you'll always be waiting for the perfect one and never actually start. Finding a lens that doesn't hinder your way of shooting, be it in terms of size and weight or coverage among other traits will make the learning curve much easier to climb. If you only like to shoot handheld, you should aim for a lighter setup, looking for 
everything that you can take out of the camera rig. If you're always on gorilla run and gun mode, you'll need something inconspicuous, like a tiny taking lens and a small scope to avoid any attention. With that, you can get in and out without anyone noticing you were shooting a big budget piece. Last, if you set your own pace of shooting, AKA no one is rushing you, or you're always going for tripod shots, you can't afford a heavier and slower choice of lens, like the one in the example before. I tried it during my early experiments and it's just not my thing. My style is 99% handheld, so I need something that won't kill my arm strength within 10 minutes of starting to shoot. After you figure out what your style is and the overall category of lens you should scan for, then you look into the different characteristics you want to bring to your footage. Do you want a vintage vibe or does a modern look work for you? Strong or subdued flares? Do you want focus to be super sharp or are you craving those optical imperfections? All of those traits can be dialed in depending on your choice of lens. It's not just on or off. For example, flares. You can get lots of flares, zero flares, and varying degrees of flares in between those two. We were talking about epic vistas in the example and how big projection lenses could be fitting to that, right? Fun fact, Ian Edward Ware is the go-to guy when it comes to anamorphic on a budget shooting of epic vistas. His work will keep you entranced for hours simmering in nature. His setup is mostly baby scopes and small sensor cameras. There's no need for large format, full frame, or a dozen Iskaramas to achieve cinematic footage. In my upcoming anamorphic cookbook course, I'll be sharing a lot more strategies with you. Strategies such as what defines the character of a scope, how to choose a lens that works best for your style of shooting, and how to rig it up properly. Make sure you stay on the lookout and subscribe to the channel because in a few days, I'll release more information about it and show you a detailed breakdown of the course. If you wanna get these updates as soon as they come, sign up for the mailing list at anamorphiccookbook.com. If you wanna get the full cookbook experience, join the channel as a member. Members get support in their anamorphic journey and more access to exclusive material made to simplify your learning. Memberships cost $3 a month so look at it as if you're paying a bus fare to meet me for a chat. In the next video, we'll get on to streamlining your anamorphic shooting and I'll walk you through a misconception that can free your mind from the shackles of, do I need a new camera for this? This idea is a big barrier for beginners and advanced shooters alike. And I only ever brought it up once before. So get ready to be free. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button and make sure to leave a comment if you got questions or suggestions. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to show you what I've got in the works. Chitta Fahadengs, out.